How old are you? At your age. Grow up. A favorite of mine. You're so immature. To which there's an appropriate response. Duh! <laughs> Aren't we all? Hi, I'm Stephen James Kravak, and I am a professional immaturist. For 35 years, I've been battling and fighting this concept, this idea of maturity and adulthood. So, maybe a few years back, I, I took one of these online maturity tests. I wanted to see, for real, was it true? Was I immature? And I would love to tell you the result of this test. But I can't. Because while I was taking the test, I became preoccupied with the thought and the idea of trying to capture gas emissions from the cavity of my buttocks. <laughs> and here is a tip. Sandwich bags don't do the trick. <laughs> you want to go with a freezer quality gallon bag. So I never really found out if I was mature because I was learning, I was growing, I was discovering how to make a Dutch oven to go. But we need to explore this concept of immaturity. It's not, it's not yet accepted in adult society. It's, it's frowned upon. Now we need to try to figure out why. Okay? Although there are advocates such as comedian Will Ferrell, immature is a word boring people use to describe fun people. It's not really going to get your point across if you're calling your, your audience boring. Okay. So let's define immaturity. Let's go back to birth. And let's establish that humankind, when it comes to instinctive survival, we're not doing too well. <laughs> Because if you leave a baby where it's born, it's going to cry itself to death. It needs tender support and care. It needs more mature people to nurture it and bring it up to said maturity. So let's fast forward to toddler years. Let's say there's a four-year-old, we're a mall food court, and this toddler is running around naked with a popsicle smudged in its mouth. No one is going to point a finger and say, at your age, grow up. No one's going to label this toddler immature. We're giving him a free pass. He's innocent. And in a harsher sense, he's ignorant. He's selfishly exploring the pursuit of fun at the expense of everyone's appetite in the food course. <laughs> and we're, we're okay with that. We're actually a kind society in accepting that. Now, let's fast forward to maturity. Now, most dictionaries would agree, they would present to you that maturity is a state or condition of adulthood. Well, what is adulthood? What is being an adult? And these same dictionaries will present, well, an adult is someone who is fully developed. Do we mean mentally, emotionally, physically? So maybe we can say everyone that goes past puberty is an adult. If you watch the news or you shop at Walmart, that's clearly not the case. So we need a little more. They say that an adult also is complete. Well, if adults are complete, then whatever happened to learning something new every day? Whatever happened to this bandwagon of a lifelong learner? That's the thing about being mature and adult. We're all still growing and we're all still learning. That's the problem when you admit, I'm mature, I'm an adult, don't treat me like a child. Well, there's still some things you could learn. Maybe that's when you stop growing. When you admit that there's still, when you don't admit there's still a child inside you. So, so, let's go back a bit. Let's go to immaturity, okay? Maybe this audience right here, anyone around 12 to 14 or 35 years of age. 
They're sitting in a class, and the teacher talks about how he loves sausages, and how he's born in 1969. An innocent child will say, cool. A mature adult will say, I like sausages too. That was a great year. An immature person will think all those things, but they're battling with this juxtaposition of new knowledge of multiple connotations of what a sausage could be or what 69 means. And they don't have, and it's a good thing they don't have tangible, hard experience to really suppress these feelings. And what emits out of them? A giggle, laughter. It's immature behavior. It's an immature response. And at least for that age, it's not appropriate in a public place. But should you blame them? We're not blaming the four-year-old at the food court. Why are we condemning them from starting to grow up? Starting to take on these new concepts, these new ideas, and deal with them with a sense of humor. So why adulthood? To a teenager, to someone who's a child, it doesn't seem like a lot of fun. But it is. You can make money, you can buy what you want, you can form lasting friendships, you can stay out with your friends. There's so many more opportunities. You have the freedom of choice. You can make something of yourself. Just sign here, dot there, make sure you initial there. There's a lot of rules that you have to play by, okay? But that's okay. Without these rules, without these adults, do you know what happens? Ask Ralph and Piggy from William Golding's 1954 allegorical novel, Lord of the Flies. So we need this safety. We need order. But these same adults say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Of course you can teach anyone a new trick. But does the old dog want to learn? That's the key. So, to define adulthood, to define maturity, we'll say, one, you're at the legal age. Two, we'll say you physically have surpassed or reached puberty. And three, so society does not fall apart, we'll say you take responsibility for yourself and for the world around you. And if that includes every living creature on this earth, like a member of PETA, or that just includes the people in your homogenous neighborhood, or maybe a conservative nationalist, that's fine. At least you're looking out for those in your world. You're taking responsibility. So when did I grow up? Or did I? I started to. October 20th, 1989. I was eight. My uncle, who looked like a spitting image of Teddy Roosevelt, always had a cigar in his mouth and a hat and was chewing it, he took my cousin and my little sister and I to the Castle of Terror haunted house in a dilapidated shopping mall outside of Buffalo, New York. And still to this day, immature, can't handle horror films, can't handle blood, violence, monsters, scared silly. But I love haunted houses. It's a safe scare. Mom and Dad are always there to protect you. You can cower behind them. But on this day, Teddy Roosevelt's uncle just waved us in. I said, aren't, aren't you coming with us? Why would I go in there? You take care of them. I didn't know what those words meant, you take care of them. What do you mean take care of them? I'm eight. I'm a child. I only think about myself. And I wasn't allowed to be scared because there was no one there to protect me. But how did I realize this? I looked at my little sister. I looked at my cousin. They were more scared than me. I had to take responsibility for them. I had to now play the adult. And I'm pushing through the haunted house. Back off, you psycho zombie pirates. <laughs> and inside, I'm shaking. I'm scared. I probably peed my pants. But I had to convince them it's okay to be scared. Big brother, big cousin's here. Let's get through this. I faked it. It was a show. That's what I learned. 
I really didn't know what I was doing, but I tried my best to help them. Your teacher, your doctor, that's all we're trying to do is bring you into a better world than what we were brought into. And does it have to be that serious? As long as we're being responsible. So, I'm in a role as a teacher. I assess the proficiency on that test and the growth overall of the student's scores. And I notice a bunch of doodles on the paper. They're all drawing these crazy pictures. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of immaturity. That's a lot of fun. I want to jump in. I did my part. I graded, I assessed, I put the, the comments and then tried to hide the score at the bottom so they read the comments. I did my job as an adult. Let me jump in and be immature. Okay? For you're only young once that you can be immature forever. So here is a nice doodle. And I added my comments, nice! These boots were made for quacking. <laughs> Turned a unicorn into the rare majestic bike horn. <laughs> and it could be nuclear disaster, or maybe it's a hula hoop. <laughs> and I thought this would start a revolution. The students would want to doodle more. The teachers joining in on the fun. This is great. They basically stopped doodling. And I, I didn't understand why. Now I do. Well, you're an adult. This is creepy. Why are you, why are you joking around on our paper? This is my job as a child to do this, not yours. This, this is weird. It shouldn't be. I did what I was supposed to still maintained order in the classroom, still serving as an adult, just embracing the shared immaturity. And that's something we all have to do. We have to take responsibility for ourselves, but also continue to seek out the child within. But I have good news. As you get older, and if you are a parent, if you are in a serious profession, you do have to act more like an adult because it keeps everything running, and it allows the young people to be a little bit more immature, which they deserve. But immaturity is cyclical, okay? It's a cycle. Because what happens when you're 65 or 70? Immaturity returns. In Southeast Asia, they will have special seats on the subway for the elderly or the disabled. Have you seen old people in Japan or Taiwan? They don't need those special seats. They'll push you right out of the way. They will sit down. They are immature. Most of the, the best dirty jokes in the world come from senior citizens. I learned this two years after I was eight. Ten years old. My paternal grandmother's house. There's a round table in the dining room and she calls me over. Steven, Steven, come here. Come here. So I listen to my grandmother. I was a good boy that day. And she said, don't tell your mother or father. And she proceeded to tell me a joke. And all I'll say is it involves a snowman, pants, and a snowblower. And I could not believe this was coming from my grandmother. But this was the holiday season. And I was taught that it's better to give than to receive. So I returned the favor, and I, I gave her a joke as well. And I got in trouble! I didn't understand why. I thought we were both adults here, that we could handle the immaturity. We both could. But the society that we had built said that that was not acceptable. So what you have to realize, and this is for all people, it doesn't matter how much they're accomplishing or how many degrees they have or children they've raised, we're all still learning and growing and seeking out pleasure and new experiences. And that should be applauded. Okay? 
I often tell people before I, before I meet them, I hate to say this, but probably what I'm going to say might offend you. And if it does, from the bottom of my heart, I forgive you. <laughs> because taking offense is one of the tra tragedies of adults and society. But there's a new hope. If you look, things are changing all around the world. In New York City, adults will pay upwards of $700 to experience preschool. And they will finger paint and they'll have little snacks. They will return to their childhood. Now we have trampoline parks. It's not just children in there. There's adults. There's escape rooms. But the problem is, we don't want adults mucking it up, okay? One of the biggest, hottest trends right now in adult hobbies and publishing is art therapy. Do you know that eight out of Amazon's top 50 bestsellers are coloring books? Okay? Coloring books! Love coloring books! But you open it up. I got one for a present. Apparently, I needed some therapy. <laughs> and I opened it up. Thousands of signs, it's a garden. What happened to the bear in overalls conducting the train? Give me that one. On the newsprint paper, child doesn't need anything fancy. An immature person can have fun. Okay? But adults have to make it all prestigious and serious. It's not serious. It's silly. It's meant to be. And how do we know that silly works? or that immaturity works, look at the workplace. If you're fortunate enough to work at a company that values you as an employee, and they start to see that morale is down, what do they do? Do they have a coffee talk? Do they go over the, the work manual? No. Here's a bunch of donuts, free breakfast. Pretty childish. Or they'll go play laser tag, or go to a ropes course. A group of 40-year-old people shooting each other in the face with a paintball gun. <laughs> team building. <laughs> it's not team building. It's childhood fun. Children don't have a steady income. The only way they know how to have fun is to interact with other people. I didn't need to look at my calendar and schedule a play date. I just knocked on the door next to me. Hey, do you want to run around and beat each other with sticks? Sure. <laughs> Innocent fun. But the world isn't always innocent. So we need to grow up. But we need to always be reminded that we're still growing and we're still learning. And I'll leave you with this last quote and one story. On May 26th, 2012, my favorite uncle, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and he was now in hospice. And this was the time for me to not be silly. I've seen enough movies, I've been to church a few times, death is a serious ordeal. I was lucky enough in my life to not go through horrible hardships. That's why I was able to stay and still am a child. And that's why if you look at some people, maybe they grow up too fast, you can't blame them. There's safety, there's order in adult behavior. But I, I was fortunate. But I was going to be as serious as I could. I was going to help my uncle. I was going to be there for him. And all the family were. We were mature. We were helping him. This was a difficult time for all of us and for him. He had mere hours, not days or weeks, to live. And I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to make the arrangements. I wanted to call the funeral home and contact everyone and write the piece in the newspaper. I wanted to bring him that plastic picture with a little straw in it so he could get some water. I wasn't good at any of that stuff. I wasn't much of an adult. The last words I heard, and they, they just struggled to come out of his lips, barely opening his eyes. And the last time I saw him, he looked at me and said, Stephen, tell your jokes. In his final moments, 
He didn't want to be serious. He didn't want to discuss politics. He wanted to laugh. But I wanted to be serious. So what did I do? You bet your ass I told those jokes. <laughs> I gave my uncle what he wanted. Enjoyment. So it doesn't matter where you find enjoyment. Just don't take it away from someone else. And if they want to run, if they want to run around buck naked with the popsicle smudged in their mouth, give them a round of applause. Join them. We'll have a safer world. So the final message is that if someone ever tells you you're immature, you say yes, yes I am, and you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.